right, I am here with Muazma, Principal Program Manager, correct? Yes. On the Microsoft Azure Data, data Team. Yes. Okay, I've got it right. <laughs> That's always the trickiest, right? All yeah. the titles, right? Yeah. We are here to talk a little bit about some new announcements yes. that happened around Copilot and Azure. Yes. So tell me more. Yes, so going into public preview this week, we have Microsoft, Microsoft Copilot in Azure. Okay. And that actually makes our developers, database administrators, anyone who's building apps using Azure, their life much more easier. And part of that capability is a lot of Azure SQL capabilities going into Microsoft Copilot in Azure. Okay, so let's talk about this a little bit more. Um, one of the challenges that I always kind of have, and I've, I've heard, particularly when it comes to co-pilot things, is all about prompting. Do we have some help for some folks on the prompting? Yes, so we have two experiences. One experience is part of the Microsoft Copilot in Azure. Okay. And part of that experience is we see a lot of prompts which help you do better database administration. In terms of the database administration, we have active user, active user connections, uh, finding out if my database is slow, missing indexes, uh, point in time restore, any of those things. So, okay, hang on, hang on. You said, why is my database slow? Yes. Tell me more. You, there's got to be more. There's got to be. You, yeah. You just ask it, why is my database slow, and it like tells you? Yeah, it tells you. Let me show you. Yeah, show me. That's even better. Let's see that. So here is what it looks like in Azure Copilot uh, experience. So you go and go towards the Copilot experience. Just type it with natural language. Why are things slow in my database? And within a few seconds, it will start showing you some amazing results, starting by looking at what your database has been up to. It goes into the CPU utilization. For example, your past hour, it was 40%. It runs some queries on your behalf. It tells you the query that actually is causing the CPU to go up to 99%. And then, not only it provides you the query, it provides you the hash of the last two hours, which indexes were used, and what was really causing that query to take all the CPU utilization. It gives you some troubleshooting information, a lot of in additional information that you can go to find more about how you can write better queries. And then if you note there, we are actually doing a list price equal to at one. Yeah. So it's going to ask you what you can do next. So it could even suggest you a next question to ask. So in this case, how can I optimize that query that is causing the CPU utilization? So, so basically what's happened here is it's saying, this query was not optimal. Yes. And then you've said, well, tell me more. Yeah. And now we have an optimal query? Yeah, and it provides you an optimal query and also provides you how to further enhance it. It gives you an example of how to actually create a non-clustered index on it. So the next time you run this query, it will be much faster and better for you. So it wasn't just the query that was causing the problem. Yeah. I had not optimized the database. Exactly. Oh, that's and so it cool. also goes into some anti-patterns. So we know that developers are not really using the patterns that are best for databases. So it actually right. goes into the ex explanation about logs, what you can do, how to use predicates, all of that, and also give you next steps. So you're not done there. So you can actually go and learn more about how we actually came up with those solutions and then what is next that you can do in this database. So this thing, this next step here, it says identify recent changes in database workload. Yeah. That, that's another prompt that you could then move into yes. the next step of the troubleshooting. Exactly. And then it also gives you other information, like how do you monitor this database? How what are the best practices? And you can go on and on. And this really becomes an end-to-end -end experience for our developers and DBAs and anyone who's building applications using Azure SQL databases. This is so freaking cool. I want to cover off one of the other things when we were talking about the announcements that were made yeah. um, and dive a little bit deeper in there. So you talk about moving this to, to preview now. Yes. What type of scenarios are really supported in the, in, in the preview of the solution? Yeah, so all of our available SKUs in Azure SQL database are supported. That includes business okay. critical, general purpose, elastic pool, hyperscale, any of those are, are currently available. And it will further expand into other databases such as Azure SQL MI and a few others in the future as well. You also have something else they tell me that you got to show me. I'm sorry, I'm caught up in this. You can't be better than this, right? There's we, nothing better. We have one thing more. So Wait, wait there's more. <laughs> so the next experience that we have is called natural language to SQL. Okay. So with English text, you can actually get T-SQL query right in your editor. So this is a new experience coming in preview. In the Azure portal query editor, you can use natural language 
and then we can provide you select queries. We're starting with just select queries right now. In future, you can imagine update, inserts, others as well. And then we use the Azure OpenAI as a large language model rack pattern to actually get that query for you most optimized for the use cases. I am absolutely awful at SQL queries. So this is essentially me being able to say, write me a select query to get me this information. Exactly. Do you want to see it? Can you show me? Yes. So this is what the experience look like. looks like in the query editor. You can just basically start with the natural language text. In here, I'm actually asking, show me a pivot summary table that displays the total number of properties sold each year between 2020 to 2023. For me to write this query, it will take about 10 minutes to really figure out the right uh, pivot table and the, and, the, and the query that is needed. Within a few seconds, it gives you the results. Uh, before I go into the result, you have an option right there to provide us feedback. If you really like this, you definitely need to provide this feedback. If you don't like this, please provide us that feedback as well, because we can further optimize the, the uh, algorithm or the rag pattern that we're using on the background to make this more effective for so you. So if it didn't really quite get me what I needed to, tell you yeah. so that we can help optimize it? Yes. Cool. And if you're happy with that, go ahead and accept it and run the query. And right there in the editor, you can see the result. And this is exactly what I was looking for. I, I don't know how you could have possibly written that query in 10 minutes, <laughs> but just because I'm just really bad at it. But in three or four seconds, yeah. that is absolutely amazing. And then we can take the code here and then implement it into the into other places wherever we need it as well, right? Yeah, you can just uh, copy it from here, r directly run it from here, or copy it to your favorite tool and just execute this query over there. Wow, this is really cool. In preview now, yes. or very, very soon this week, yes? This week, yes. Okay, awesome. Uh, where do we go to learn more? How can we get more? We were just chatting before, the more sessions on this, more information to come? Yeah, there's a bunch of sessions this week, so definitely check those out. In order to learn more about these capabilities, go to AKMS slash SQL Copilot. Very, very cool. I, I'm, you, you can't go anywhere right now because I want to go more into this whole thing with the, the natural language query editor. This is, this is just so amazing. Uh, Moazma, thank you so very much for joining us at Microsoft Build. Go check out her sessions and, of course, all of this stuff on the AKA link.